Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you, today on Evangelistic Outreach.
the tenacity, the, 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 the guts that uh, these young kids, under some horrible conditions, I was always amazed at how we just uh, kept trucking along and doing what we knew we had to do. God had been so great to me and got me through some, some severe combat things. I mean, rockets flying over you and bullets and things of that nature. You know, a lot of my friends, my friend, they didn't come back. The agreement that we made with the NATO Alliance is that uh, we're not bringing any Bibles, any crucifixes, anything like that. We can't bring anything of religious uh, Christianity uh, into Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. He said, but I'm going to allow you to bring your Bible because I know your, your background and I, I feel you're sincere. So we started having church services. Then the next week we had a service and then another service and another service. And a couple of days before the ground war, I was having a service at the Kuwait board. And we had 2,500 people at this service. They said it's the largest Christian service recorded in the history of Saudi Arabia. We had Saudis, Kuwaitis, different countries were in the service. They showed it on CNN. My dad saw me on TV. We as citizens need to understand there have seen things and witnessed things that no human being ever cares to see or witness again. I had one who was apologizing to me for being around. When uh, a mortar round exploded, And he's apologizing to me. And uh, he's saying, I'm sorry, sir. I'll, uh, I'll do better next time. When I get better, I'll come back. I'll, I'll make you proud. And I told him, I, uh, I am proud. And he died just minutes later. trouble a soul was in distress evil whispered in my ear you've been left for dead in the trial of my life all i could do was sigh but then suddenly god breathed in me a second way to try and i live to tell about this i live to testify i live to tell about this I let God be glorified, Satan's plans to destroy me. I back fight like dynamite, give me a testimony. I shall live and not die. For a moment things are hopeless, I thought I would not survive. Oh, but I live to tell about it, I live to testify. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Satan, you did not do your homework when you chose me to harass. You see, I was a born again just yesterday. I've been tested in the past. I know just how you work and how all you do is lie. But I will not be deceived. I know the way, the truth, the lie. I live to tell about me. Yeah. I live to testify. I live to tell about me. Let God be glorified Satan's plans to destroy me Back by like dynamite Gave me a testimony I shall live and not die For a moment things are hopeless I thought I would not survive I live to tell about it I live to testify
I live to tell about it. I live to testify. I live to tell about it. Let God be glorified. Satan's plan is to destroy me. Like fire, like dynamite. Give me a testimony. I shall live and not die. For a moment, things look hopeless. I thought I would not survive. But I live to tell about it. Your homework when you chose me to harass. You see, I was born again just yesterday. I've been tested in the past. I know just how you work and how all you do is lie. But I will not be deceived. I know the way the truth will lie. I will tell about it. Oh, I will testify. I will tell about it. I let God be glorified. Satan's plans to destroy me by fire like dynamite. I gave me a testimony. I shall live and not die. For a moment, things are hopeless. I thought I would not survive. But I live to tell about it. I live to testify. I live to tell about it. I live to testify, oh, I live to tell about it. Oh, let God be glorified. Satan's plan to destroy me. Like fire, like dynamite. Give me a testimony. I shall live and not die. For a moment, things are hopeless. I thought I would not survive. But I live to tell about it. There was no freedom. People is like have a like really hard life and they go into the jail and then government kill them. The entire Sudanese civil war uh, is started in my hometown. Everybody's corrupted. Everyone is corrupted. There's the rebels, there's all these people fighting. They call you slave. Government don't let to us to go to the church. They came on the land and, you know, they were just, 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 just killing everybody. Well, I talked to my neighbor about Jesus. What they did, they fired on us. So everybody had to jump into the water. Her mother started to believe to Jesus, and then her husband killed her. It was a nightmare getting separated from your parents. That night, we were just seeing bullets. Like, I thought they were fireflies, but they were actually bullets. Her husband said, if I find who talked about you to the Jesus, I'm going to find them and I'm going to kill them too. We escaped and got into the mountains, into the forest. We had actually to run uh, quite fast indeed. My parents, they say, like, we can live here anymore. And we found ourselves in a refugee camp in Ethiopia. I lived in a refugee camp for seven years. And we went to the United Nations. I did always pray about getting to a better place. Now that I've come here, I've got the freedom to go to school, um, study what I want, be who I want. You can wear whatever you want. You can go to the church. Here, I have opportunities. I'm studying biotechnology, engineering, and uh, graphic designing. My master's, 
uh, in accounting. After I finished college, I want to be a lawyer. God always take up the chill and depend on us. I've asked him everything I've ever wanted and everything I've gotten. I mean, I saw how God is good.
My dad left home at 17 and was shipped right overseas, and he saw a great deal of, um, of an actual conflict. He was right in the fighting in Korea. And um, he, they had a, a pretty bad incident where they were ambushed and all of, most of his company was killed, including his commanding officer. And so he was the highest ranked person left uh, and they were in the middle of an ambush and they were just being slaughtered. And so my dad did this maneuver, which was not, they were not given any orders to do it. He started yelling orders. And since there was nobody else to give orders, they started following and he, kind of double ambushed back to the enemy and moved them out uh, and got past where they had their guns all set up and saved several, several lives by doing so. And he put himself in the line of fire pretty heavily, but uh, thankfully came out unscathed. And because of that, he was awarded a silver star directly from President Truman. So that was a pretty big thing. Our family still has it. Matter of fact, I still have it. Uh, my dad is gone now. But that was a, a big part of our lives as kids growing up. I can re still remember the smell of my mom's cedar chest when we would open it to look at my dad's silver star. Now it was always kept in there and it was locked and us kids were not allowed in there. But every once in a while my mom would get the key down and open it and open the cedar chest so we could look in my dad's uniform. <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> and anyways, I can uh, remember the smell of his old uniform. My grandfather, my maternal grandfather, served in the war. My paternal grandfather was killed in the war. My uncle was killed in World War II. My youngest brother, Brian, has served in the Army for, I believe, 15 years or so, and is actually um, currently in the Walter Reed Medical Center and has been there for going on a year with a brain injury due to the war in Iraq. I have two nephews who are serving in the military, one in the Marine Corps, one in the Army, and uh, my nephew, Ben, who is in the Marine Corps, was just uh, shipped out to Afghanistan last week for his second deployment. Needless to say, we're patriotic and we love the good old USA. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean.
Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, already to harvest. For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.